So let's go to that moment, Jamie. You're three years in. Yeah. You've burned through the money. Yes. You have been told no by everybody. And even though you have leveraged all of the steps that were ordered along the way and like an amazing Denny's waitress, (laughs) you can talk to anybody, (laughs) you can hustle, you can figure it out. Yeah. You have nothing but closed doors in front of you. Yes. And a ton of product and no money. Yes. What is the turning point? Yes. Why did you not give up? Yeah. So two big things happened. The first uh, was in the form of a crazy painful rejection. So I thought, Mel, um, so we got a call from a big potential investor and very famous for launching all these sort of unknown brands and making them big products we all buy in grocery stores. And, you know, and I thought, and they got a hold of our product. And I thought like, oh, if they invest in A, I'm not going to go bankrupt. B, like they, we can leverage their, their, their clout to get in these stores that keep telling me no. Yeah. Like I had this whole scenario planned out that was like this pretty woman moment, right? Where I was like, oh, he's going to save the day. <laughs> and so we started taking meeting after meeting uh, and, and we, it got down to the final meeting with this huge investment firm. And uh, it was in person. My husband and I actually flew to the meeting. And the head guy was about three feet from me. Yeah. And his whole team was there, who was awesome. I had just presented our whole future product pipeline. And he says, you know, you should be so proud of this product you're created, you've created. It's really, really good. Uh, but it's a no. We're going to pass on investing in it cosmetics. And I was like, okay, can you tell me why? Because I'm so used to hearing no. And I was yeah. like, okay, even though really I was devastated. But Well, yeah, because they just led you on and you just went through it. And this was supposed to be the meeting where they're like, let's do this. And I was so hopeful and I was so desperate. Yeah. And um, he says, he got very quiet and he says to me, do you want to know, you know, do you, or what? I said, I said, can you tell me why? And he says to me, do you want me to be uh, really honest with you? And I said, yes, please. And he got really quiet and he's like three feet from me in person. And he says, I just don't think women will buy makeup from someone who looks like you with your body and your weight. And when he said that to me, and this is why it was such a big moment for me. When he said that to me, first of all, a lifetime of body doubt and self-doubt. Like I remember it flooding my body all at once. And when I looked at him, I actually felt no anger toward him. I felt like I was almost like staring my own fear um, straight in the eye. But when he said those words to me, Mel, and this is what, this is when we talk about purpose and intuition. He said, I just don't think women will buy makeup for someone who looks like you with your body and your weight. The second he said that I felt this feeling in my gut. Like I can remember it like it was yesterday, this like strong feeling that said he's wrong. Like I felt it. Right. And I didn't know how I was going to prove it, but I felt that feeling. And what I realized later, when I look back at that moment, this guy, this dude gave me a no But God gave me a knowing in that moment, in that moment. And I believe every one of us has had someone tell us we're not the right fit or no, or you don't have what it takes. Sometimes we're the ones telling ourselves that. I don't love you anymore. Yes. Yes. Right. But if, if you get still and you learn to hear your knowing, I believe which one you listen to, if you listen to the no, all the no's, all the rejections, all the self-doubt, or you get still and listen to you, your knowing, whether that's from your own intuition, from your creator, from the universe, whatever speaks to you, but we all have it. We all have it. And I believe our 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 life and our purpose and and our entire destiny comes down to which one we listen to. Do you listen to the no or do you listen to the knowing? Okay. I promised a masterclass. That right there is worth a billion dollars. In life, are you going to listen to the no? Or are you going to listen to the knowing inside of you? That's it. Yeah. As somebody who loves you and as your friend, when you shared that story with me and hearing you tell it again right now, I literally go, I'm going to kill that motherfucker. I I go, (laughs) I have that, my knowing goes, oh, yeah? (laughs) Oh, yeah? You think, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me me show you. Like, it's that, like, I get that sort of mojo thing going when somebody says no like that at a moment like that. It's like, I'll show you. Yeah. And I guess I just got in this moment sort of this wake-up call that my knowing often feels like, I'll show you. 
Yeah. You missed out. You'll be sorry. What does yours sound like? And it's almost always true. That's almost always true, right? What does yours sound so, like? So is yours yep. like, mm, or is it more of like... I mean, in that case, I was devastated and at the same time had the strong... It, it was just a piece. Honestly, in that moment, it was a piece he's wrong and that didn't make sense in my head. Why? Because I had had three years of hundreds of rejections. And this is the thing, right? Jay-Z says the genius thing we did was we didn't give up. Mm. That's it, like one of my favorite quotes of his. In that moment, everything told me to give up, Mel. I mean, it was hundreds of rejections. And now it felt what felt like my last hope of desperation told me something totally different. No, because not only do I not believe in anything you're doing necessarily, but I actually just think you're personally not the right fit. Like women just won't buy makeup from it was just like, oh my gosh. It was like all of these no's everywhere. And 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 I want to share that because you know, it's easy for someone to go, oh, wow, she built a billion dollar company. She must have just got lucky. Or maybe she just had so many connections. Or We always think, but, but, but really what it comes down to sometimes in this case, that big moment for me, do you listen to the no's or you listen to the knowing, right? Yeah. And, and, and I made that decision that day to trust the knowing, to trust myself. I kept feeling like I was supposed to keep going. I didn't know how, right? And what do you do when you don't even know the next step? So you got this kind of, you know, jerk who's like, yeah, yeah they're not going to buy it because of your body type and this, that, and the other thing. You're like, yeah, yeah you're wrong, motherfucker. Yeah. But what do you do next? And, and so the next right step, the next thing that feels right when you can't even see how the how, heck it's How do you even out. determine what the next right step is? Yeah, you just get, for me, I just get still. I pray. I pray. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. I pray. Uh, and I just, but whether for you, you know, listening, it's prayer or it's the universe or, mm. or your intuition, when you get still. All you can do is try to listen, right? And and try to live that answer, whatever it is, and take that next right step. And I just felt, I just had this knowing I was supposed to keep going. And even when it didn't make sense. And and you know, I remember crying myself to sleep. I remember writing in my journal, um, know your why, then fly, girl, fly. Mm. And I read those words every day till I didn't need the reminder. Um, I would Google stories of people that had gone through thousands of rejections who no one would know that they went through them because they're so successful today. Or, you know, and I just kept trying to sort of build this toolbox of things I could lean on. Um, but I, And how did, how did QVC come about? Because oh, yeah. you built it cosmetics and it became because of you the most successful beauty brand on all of QVC you did yeah. over a thousand appearances yeah so how did you even get onto QVC because that in and of itself is no small feat yeah well you know their their head guy of beauty who's like a legend had said no to me many times no you're not the right fit uh and I happened to be at this this big beauty expo. And was this before or after this guy was like, no, we're not investing? After. After? After. So she has now gotten three years of no's. Yeah. They're almost out of money. Her intuition is knowing that she's going to fly, girl, fly. <laughs> so she is still showing up to a beauty expo yeah. where I want you to understand in the business world, it's like going to a convention where everybody that you have ever fooled around with who has then broken up with you is attending. <laughs> so everybody that has said no yes. to her, yes. you know, she walks in and it's like, oh, here's this chick again, <laughs> the it chick, right? Yep. The yep. it cosmetics person that has been sending me the stuff and calling me and we have told her no, do not make eye contact. So you are now I at this thing. <laughs> This describes it exactly. Yes. Everyone you fooled around with, who broke up with you, and they're like, oh, don't make eye contact. Yeah. Oh, it's God, that. this chick again <laughs> with, the, with the skin, with the, okay. Yeah. So you're at this thing. You've yes. been told no by the big, 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 big person. It's been three years. So we're talking like 2011, 2012-ish. What do you do? So I, uh, so you you get this three foot table, right? It's a huge convention. There's six thousand women at this convention. <sighs> wow. They're walking up and down, and it's every beauty brand in the world. Are and they the, buying it for their stores or no? So what it is? It's it was this big um, cosmetic executive women award show. Okay. And why you're there is you are you get a three foot table. You're demonstrating your product. You're hoping that someone who walks by either wants to carry your product in their stores mm -hmm. or all the press is there. Right. They cover your product or or there's also, you can win some big award. So I'm there 
and and then all the brands you can imagine, right, are there. And there's 6,000 women walking. And when I got there, I saw QVC had this huge booth in the background. And you're not allowed to leave your table, right? And I couldn't afford to get kicked out. Um, but I just kept having this feeling like, okay, I've called them a million times. They've told me no forever. But I've never, like, met anyone in person, right? So I kept trying to sneak away from my table. And every time I got over there, the buyers would, would be mobbed with people. Mm. I eventually got over there, made my way to one of the buyers, introduced myself, poured my heart out. Like with, I remember sweat just dripping <laughs> through my clothes because I was freaking out down to no money. Yeah. Um, I'll cut a real long story short, but she gave me her card. Um, and, uh, you know, it's like when someone says, oh, DM me on Instagram. You don't know if they meet you. They really right. mean it. Then you're on your Instagram checking your DMs and you're like, oh, they still haven't replied. Applied. And I thought, is that what it's going to be like? But she actually meant it. And I, I flew out, had a meeting with her. We got a yes, my first big yes, for one shot on QVC. And what it meant, Mel, was I was going to get this 10-minute segment live on the air, live in front of 100 million homes. And I either had to sell enough product to hit their sales goal yep. um, or not come back. We were only doing one to two orders a day on our website. Okay. And One <laughs> to two orders a day, everybody. Yep. After yep. Yep. Three almost years. four, yeah, three years mm -hmm. of this. Yeah. Oh, this and is barely like, keeping the lights on. Um, and so now you get this, you get your shot. Like I there are those shot. moments in life. Yes. You're at bat. Yep. And you got to be ready for those. Yeah. And so put us right there with you. What happened? Yeah. What happened was I was about to learn one of the greatest life lessons I've ever learned to this day. Um, and he here's what I mean by that. So I found out I get one shot and uh, then I learn it's consignment, which means they, uh, so first of all, I had to sell over 6,000 units of our concealer in this 10 minute window to hit their sales goal or not come back, which was about like $130,000 or $140,000 of product in a 10 minute window. I also want to point out to everybody that's 10 years of sales on her website at the current amount. Yeah. So in 10 minutes, everybody, yeah. she on live television yeah. has to move 10 years worth of volume she was selling on her website at that time. In one shot. Like in one, one shot. <laughs> and she'd never done this before. I realize you were a television anchor, but this is a totally different thing. Well, QVC, it's, I mean, you know, it's unlike stores where you can walk in and there's thousands of products in one space. Their one minute of airtime can get one product. So you're competing with the volume of like Apple iPhone or Dyson Vacuum. You have to hit these high sales goals. Yeah. And what I quickly learned was the offer was consignment, which meant I wasn't guaranteed to be paid for it. I had to figure out um, how to get a loan to cover the cost of manufacturing uh, 6,000 units of product, shipping it in, going through legal, going through QC, going through all of it. And then I learned if I go on air and it doesn't sell, I have to take it all back oh my God. and therefore go out of business, right? So you should never, ever, ever accept a purchase order you can't afford to lose uh, ever. But at this point, it was like, I think I'm, I don't know what this else is to it. do. This, this is, is it. This is the shot. This is it. And so here's what happened. We went to 22 banks uh, that all said no, and they probably should have. Um, the 23rd bank, which was California Bank and Trust, and uh, gave us a, a loan that covered our very first um, – purchase order and a little bit more. So I took the little bit more. We hired third-party consultants. I'm like, I'm going all in. I want to do the best 10 minutes yeah. I could possibly do. I, I want to I have no regrets. And they all told me the same thing. Which is? Which is, if you want a chance at making it, here's what you need to do. You need to use this type of model to demonstrate your product, which is flawless skin, early 20s, all the same skin tone. And I'm like, okay, but that's inauthentic. That's not why I'm building this brand. I'm like, what if I put models in their 70s and then and someone with hyperpigmentation and someone with acne? And, and, and what if I take my own makeup off on national TV and I could prove live how the product works? And they were mortified. And here's the thing, Mel, they wanted me to win. Like they were giving me the best advice that they know how. And I this had never been done. So we're, is this 2011? This is 2010. Yeah, so end 2010, of 2010, everybody. Mm -hmm. So this was not something people did. Yeah. Like we're talking about the person who changed the industry mm -hmm. right here. And this is the moment you're hearing it. 
And everybody that were the quote experts yeah. were saying no. And this goes back to one of the major takeaways that you were learning from our professor of purpose, Jamie Kern Lima. And that is there's a huge difference between a no and a knowing. Mm, yeah. And if huge. you're the only you that will ever exist, your knowing is the unique difference that you're going to make in this world. Yes. And in this moment with one shot to go, everything on the line alone from one out of 23 banks that was willing, she said, no way to the freaking experts. And she listened to her knowing. So when you walked into QVC with normal human beings, <laughs> no flawless mm. models, no one with perfect skin, all yep. ages, all body types. Yep. Yep. Did people say, wait, you can't take them on the air? Or was there any, like, were people like, oh, she's got, this is just going to be terrible? Like, what was that like when you walked in? Did they even know you were going to take your makeup off? Um, I let them, yeah, I let them know I wanted to. And QVC was great, you know. The, here's the thing about QVC is, like, they want everyone to be their authentic selves. It's just yep. this has never been done this way before. Okay. And I wish I could say it was easy for me to just go, I'm just going to go with my knowing. But the truth is I flew out there a week early, Mel. I sat in a rental car in the parking lot, cried every day. I actually second guessed myself. I'm like, if I do it, maybe I'll do it their way first. Then I'll make money. Then I'll do it my way. Uh, but I know that, you know, authenticity, you can't fake authenticity. And authenticity alone doesn't automatically guarantee success. But what I do know is in, in authenticity guarantees failure. Every time. Okay, everybody, stop the professor classes in session. Do you hear that? That inauthenticity, being fake, mm -hmm. trying to do something everybody else's way, because that's just, you're too insecure to do it your way, yeah. that never guarantees success. Yeah. Authenticity, your knowing, your special spin on things, yeah. that is the pathway to purpose and success. Yeah. There is no other way. And so after a week of crying in your rental car in the parking lot at QVC, mm -hmm. you were like, I'm going with the knowing. I'm going with the knowing. And um, so tell us about that first appearance. You're standing there on a television set. There's yep. a bazillion cameras. The lights are bright. Yeah. You got your models there. Yep. You're taking the risk of your lifetime on live television in front of 100 million homes. Yes. You are doing something that has never been done on television before. Yeah, I remember literally I wore two pairs of Spanx, Mel. Not because I cared how I looked, but like I was so freaked out. Like my hands were shaking and I was sweating through my clothes. So I had on double Spanx under my dress. And I remember the moment the, the camera went live, right? And there's a big countdown clock on the floor that started at, at 10 minutes. And by the way, a minute or two before I went onto the set, I learned you're not guaranteed your 10 minutes. Why? If you are a minute or two into your cell and you're not hitting numbers, they know by the second. Your clock, you might think you have eight minutes still to go and your clock will jump to one or jump <gasps> to two minutes left. Because yeah. your product's a flop. Yep, exactly. And you're a flop. And so you literally are racing against the clock to be successful out of the gate. So what did you do to like hook everybody? Did you take your makeup off right away? Did you like, yeah. what did you do? So, so I, first of all, I go out of the, you know, I, I go live. I remember it was like 9.59, 9.58, 9.58. And I'm like, oh. and I remember I had practiced in my bathroom mirror, right? So many times. If I had known the high five habit then, I would have been way more confident. <laughs> But I was practicing in the bathroom mirror this demonstration a million times on my wrist, how our concealer doesn't crease and the best two selling concealers crease. And I'd done this demonstration like this where I show it and they all start to crease. So I'm holding my wrist up, trying to do this as we go live to show that, but my but my hand's like this now. And it was never like shaking when I was doing it a million times. it wouldn't bend everybody. Like she yeah. was so... So anxiety ridden <laughs> that yes. she's sweating through her two pairs of pangs, Spanx yes. and her wrist will not bend so she cannot demonstrate that her product won't crease. Yes. And the host grabbed my wrist and was like, thank you, sugar. And she took over. <gasps> and then I remember my bright red bare face before shot coming up on national television. I remember walking over to our models, real women, all shapes, sizes, skin tones, skin challenges, 
calling them beautiful, meaning it. Uh, I remember. Do you did you take? So when did you take your makeup? When so, she grabbed your hand and said, "Thank you, sugar." Yeah, yeah. Did that wake so you up, sweet. or were you like, I Mel? No, I didn't, it was like out of my body. I was so just do you praying. did you like just then take your makeup off? Well, they did a whole bare face before shot of me for that show. I oh. have t- I've taken it off live a million times okay. since that okay. first show. It was like yeah, bare face before shot and then the after. Um, and I remember walking over to them. I remember we were gosh six or seven minutes in. I didn't know how we were doing, but I knew we weren't cut yet. Um, and then it got down to like a minute left, and the host said, uh, uh, "The deep shades almost gone. The tan shades almost sold out." And I was like freaking out. And I remember literally right at the 10 minute mark, this giant um, sold out sign came up across the screen and I start crying on national television. (laughs) Oh, I love you. They cut from me and went to like Dyson vacuum or something. Um, and I remember my husband came rushing through the double doors of the studio and I, and, and he's like, has his arms up and I'm just sobbing and I'm like, real women have spoken (laughs) and I'm just like crying. And I thought he was going to give me a hug or be all excited. And he just looked at me and he's like, we're not going bankrupt. (laughs) And I was like, "Ah!" (laughs) and I just, (laughs) that one airing, which was September of 2010, uh, became five more that year, then 101 the next year, and then I did 250 live shows a year um, myself, direct live on, on on QVC year after year. So we built the biggest beauty brand in QVC's history. And the only reason that I share that is because it was years of no, and mm. you're not the right fit. And 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 what I love for for anyone listening who needs to hear this is, no one can tell you you're not the right fit. No one. And you can get all the no's in the world, but you have your knowing. And 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 by the way, I believe this, Mel. I believe even when you trust your knowing and then it seems like it was wrong and things don't go your way over and over and over. Like I look back at those moments, right? I really wanted that investor to invest in us. Thank God he didn't. Oh when God. I say everything's happening for us, what I mean is like, if he, I was so desperate that if he would have invested in us then, I probably would have given him the majority of the company for probably right. almost no money, right. right? By the time, many years, six years later, after that day, six years later, when um, L'Oreal bought this little company and started in my living room for $1.2 billion cash, it was still, lar- I was the largest shareholder. Paulo and I were the largest shareholders. And I look back and it's like, oh gosh, thank God. Uh, the the all the no's happened when they did, even when they sucked, even when it felt like it wasn't fair. Mm. Um, and I can look at that in many scenarios. Sometimes we don't have some big positive outcome, but we learn a purpose through a no. Right. Right. We learn a calling through a no. Um, we learn a lesson. We build strength. We build resiliency. We appreciate the beautiful moments so much more when we've gone through the tough ones. So. Have you ever seen that investor since? <laughs> I have not seen him. Uh, the day that we... Of course, I asked the petty question. I'm like, have you ever like seen him to like <laughs> twist the little knife in there? Okay. So, so uh, I heard from him one time ever mm-hmm. again, and it was six years later, the day that L'Oreal announced the deal. So because they're a public company, they announced... Um, you know, that they had acquired at Cosmetics, made me the first woman to hold a CEO title of a brand in their 107-year history. They did the big press release. So that's kind of surprising. 107 years, L'Oreal, a makeup company. You're, it's t- it took them that long to have the first female CEO of a brand? I hope they have many more now. That is my yes. prayer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, were, you were the trailblazer there too. It's, uh, it's been, yeah. So many things. <laughs> it's been a journey. And here's the thing, Mel. It was another woman inside L'Oreal. It was Carol Hamilton, who was head of luxury for North America. She'd been there, gosh, 30 plus years. And she championed mm. for me to keep my CEO title, all the things. Like it was another woman saying, oh, and, and it's funny because I actually think she should have been the first woman. You know what mm, I mean? And I think, mm-hmm. again, um, there's an example, by the way, of, of, I believe, I'm not going to speak for her. I believe she knows. This is my opinion. I think she probably knows she should be the first female CEO. But look how she used what she went through to then, boom, be of purpose and of service and help make sure that I kept my CEO title. Um, you know, everything we go through. Um, but so so they announced it, right? So all of a sudden it was a homepage of Wall Street Journal, the press everywhere. And that was the first time and only time since that I heard from that potential investor. And what did he say? He said, congratulations on the L'Oreal deal. I was wrong. 
is what he said, and wished me the best of luck. And uh, uh, that's a so, big deal to admit you're wrong. It is. Um, and uh, and so when you speak about petty, so I what I did say to him was thank you. But what I wanted to say, <laughs> like, <laughs> what did you want to say? <laughs> so in that moment, here's what I thought about. I, I thought about, um, do you remember the movie Pretty Woman where, where like she goes in the store and they wouldn't help her? Mm -hmm. And then she goes back. Remember when she goes back? Yes. So I wanted to say to him, big mistake. Huge. Huge. <laughs> I could give you 1.2 billion reasons why it was a huge mistake. Um, but I didn't. I wouldn't have wanted to be him in that situation. You know, we probably would have been one of the most successful investments in his firm's history, you know. And so, listen, it wasn't uh, reject. I always say rejection is God's protection so often, you know. There's another one, everybody. Rejection <sighs> is God's protection. Yeah. It's a good way to frame it. And I think when you look in the rear view mirror, you know that all the rejections you've faced, especially in relationships, were mm. there to protect you. I think the true thing that you've taught me through your story and through the example that you continue to set, Jamie, is that true power and, and grace and grit and belief is about seeing that in front of you, mm. not behind you, mm. that the, the rejections that you're facing right now that you can look ahead and realize it's protecting you in this moment. Summer is supposed to be this awesome time where we relax, we dial it down. If you're lucky and you can get to the beach, that's fantastic, or a pool. But when I'm at the beach, you know what I'm thinking about? My freaking future and the endings and the beginnings. And today I want to throw how you believe in yourself in the middle of all these endings and beginnings. And how do you believe in yourself when you haven't even started taking the action? My guest today, she's a super close friend of mine and she is somebody you want to hear from right now. 